cyberpunk style meets skirmish combat in Infinity. Experience eight high-tech factions and fight to control the human sphere at the Infinity Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. Become a general of mighty armies at the Kings of War Hub. Take command of elves, dwarves and orcs in this game of masked fantasy combat on BeastsOfWar.com. Hello everybody, I am back with Michael, and this time we are talking Lannisters. So, Michael, what are the tactics for this army? So, the Lannisters are not going to have the combat prowess that the Starks do, but they're going to more than make up for that in defensive capabilities, and just general kind of trickiness. Okay. Um, playing Lannisters, you're going to make some very uh, good at use of the political board, mm -hmm. and your cards are going to devastate enemy morale. So, you're not going to necessarily kill them, but you're going to cause them to break and flee the battlefield. Okay. Uh, now, one thing I'm seeing, instantly looking at the models, everybody looks to be a lot more heavily armored than when we were looking at the Starks. Right, so with the Starks, you're going to have this almost kind of hodgepodge look of all the different houses that are aligned to Starks. Mm -hmm. Lannisters are Lannisters. Yeah. So you're going to have a much more legionary looking formation, and because they are the wealthiest house, you're going to have a lot better armor. You actually have your Lannister guards over here, okay, so which are the... Gentlemen? Oh, yes. And they are the heaviest armored uh, unit in the core box. Mm -hmm. Um, some of the best defenses there, and actually, such are their defenses that they have the Lannister Supremacy Rule, which is if they're attacked and you don't deal them enough damage, then your unit actually has to make a panic test, because, like, man, these guys look better than us, they're better equipped than us, and we didn't <laughs> do anything to them, yeah. so we might want to run away now. Okay. Um, sounds interesting. Sounds like a very, very different sort of play style. You know, there's that, that hammer and anvil feel we're sort of getting between the two, I'm guessing. Yep, so talking on that hammer and anvil... Um, mindset. That's actually very well represented here because you have an anvil unit here. You have kind of a mixture here of the halberdiers. Mm -hmm. These guys are not as defensive as the Lannister guards, mm -hmm. but they have these set for charge abilities. So if someone comes charging into them, they get to make a reactionary attack against them. So they're a very good uh, unit to just send up into the center of the battlefield to claim an objective or hold a point. Mm -hmm. And your enemy is in a no-win situation because either you're going to be controlling that point and getting victory points and winning this, you know, the game mode and scenario that you're playing, mm -hmm. or they've got to come up and attack you. Now, there are ways to mitigate that by like, coming to the sides and the rear and whatnot. Yeah, this was what I was just about to ask. I see that the bases are marked into the quadrants for the flank. So does that make a big difference during the combat? Oh, absolutely. So you're going to gain a lot of combat bonuses for attacking someone in the flank or especially the rear. Mm -hmm. And sometimes abilities will shut off, like the halberdiers. Mm -hmm. That's one way to bypass them, is that you're going to need to come in through the sides or through the rear if you want to avoid getting that uh, gang of free attack on you. Mm -hmm. So positioning is definitely key. Yeah, so I'm guessing that's where some of your cavalry might come in, being able to actually move and get around to that flank with mm -hmm. a little bit of extra speed. Yep, and that's another, because of the bonuses you get, it's also, it also can help you bypass some of the heavy defenses that you'll see in some units. Like, you're going to suffer negatives to your defense saves when you're attacked on the flank, so yeah. whereas the Lannister guards here, if you attack them head-on, they're going to be one of the toughest units to actually crack through. Yeah. But if you hit them from the sides or hit them from the rear, then they'll fold because... You're hitting them in the weak points. Yeah, uh, this this is one of those classical sort of medieval battle things. If you catch a unit not on the front facing where they're ready to take the charge, they're not having a good day. Right. All right, uh, we have one more unit here. Who are these guys? So back to that hammer and anvil. This is definitely the hammer of the Lannister army. These are the Mountains men from House Clegane of, you know, Sandor and Gregor fame. Uh, these guys here are all about just getting the attack off and doing nasty charges. They actually have the devastating charge rule, so if you charge the enemy, you're going to cause them to panic, which is going to potentially cause extra casualties when they've got to make their test after the attack, because the guys might run away, because those are the mountains men, these giant, you know, just guys with heavy armor and great swords just charging right at us. I do love the fact that even in the miniatures, you've actually sculpted these guys to be a little bit bigger than the other guys. They look a bit, a bit more bullish, a bit more buff. Oh, yes. Well, you, you absolutely have to be... You know, just a big, nasty guy to be running, you know, with the mountain. Yeah. Which, ironically, they had Jamie Lannister here with them. But still a pretty nasty guy there, too, oh, yeah. right? <laughs> definitely, definitely. Now, on to the political side of things. So, we have Cersei as one of the political characters that can be used on that sideboard. What sort of things is she going to do? Cersei here uh, has the uh, influence ability of no confidence. So, when she moves on to the political board... She's actually going to start causing negatives to enemy morale. You're going to choose an enemy unit, and she's going to start influencing them for the rest of the round. They're going to suffer minus two to their morale tests, which means that whenever they're going to test for panic, or if you have cards that might cause them to get bribed, or things like that, their your resolve is going to waver a bit more because Cersei is working the you know the back politics and you know yeah. potentially um, you know using her, her um, you know her ways to 
maybe bribe or threaten you know the how the the leaders and the commanders that you have in that group yeah so basically this sergeant has been bribed to actually tell his men no lads we're not we're not fighting today we're, we're going home right or she might just be saying you know hey you know if you lead these guys too well maybe your family's dead when they come back you oh. know it's that's it's you know a song of ice and fire it's not yeah, exactly yeah. the the cheeriest setting in the world oh, i, I kind of <laughs> guess not i kind of guess not okay so for this faction uh to start off with do we have that that same sort of uh, du dual sort of commander issue at the start where you can take two different guys to actually build the armies two different ways? So in the starter box, you're going to have your choice between Jamie Lannister, the Kingslayer, yeah. and Gregor Cle uh, Clegane, the yeah. Mountain. Yeah. So Jamie is very focused on uh, counterattacks and punishing the enemy for failing. So when you're playing his force, you're very reactionary. Your mm -hmm. opponent's going to attack you, you're going to do something nasty to them. Mm -hmm. They're going to try to charge you, you're going to do something nasty to them. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, if you're playing the Mountain, you're all about, I'm going to make those guys dead. And <laughs> it's going to be, I'm going to charge, I'm going to gain bonuses for attacking, bonuses for wiping you out, and when I kill you, I'm even going to get to make additional attacks by just charging into your guys who are nearby. Lovely. Okay, right. For this faction, say I'm the Starks playing against them, what am I going to want to look for to actually maybe break them down? When you're playing against the Lannisters, usually their units have something that they're very good at, mm -hmm. and if you can bypass that, it's going to hurt them pretty badly. Like the halberdiers here, if you come at them from the front, that's the worst thing you possibly do. So you need to get into the sides. Yeah. And ironically, the Lannisters have a very strong focus on breaking enemy morale. Yeah. But because these guys are just paid soldiers and they're not really fighting for any cause, they themselves actually have a pretty bad morale value as well. Ah. So you can use that to advantage it as the Starks by using some uh, cards to maybe give your attacks vicious, which is going to cause penalties to enemy morale, mm. and actually play against uh, that aspect of them. Ah, I, I do like the fact that, from what I'm hearing, it's not just get down on the tabletop and grind each other to dust. There's, there's actually more of a, a mentality to the actual units and soldiery that are on the table. Oh, yes. Uh, again, if you just try to hammer your way through Lannister guards, mm. you're probably going to lose that fight because they are some of the heaviest uh, defended guys there. Yeah. But they've got a very bad morale value, so you've got to focus on, okay, this might be the best way to win, is not necessarily trying to kill these guys, but break them. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, Michael, thank you very much. Uh, everybody, uh, get your comments in below. Tell us, are you going to be playing the Lannisters? Uh, we'll move on. See you in the next one. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now, and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming Let's Plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.